What is up RPG fans? In this video, I will be ranking all the characters in Chained Echoes in a tier list, at least all the playable characters. Also, there will be spoilers ahead because you know there are a lot of playable characters, quite a few secret ones, all that jazz. So if you haven't actually beat the game, or not even beat the game, but haven't actually unlocked all 12 slash 13 characters yet, probably get to that before you get in this video also there are way too many ads on this website i don't know why i apologize all right so we're just gonna go in order of when you get them in your party and you know we're gonna start with glenn and glenn is gonna go right up into the s plus tier why because he's just as good as tanking as the tanks he has just as much health and yet he actually does damage and boy is glenn amazing first of all we finally get a red-headed jrpg protagonist i like the representation just kidding. um anyway uh glenn just does a ton of damage like even from the get-go he gets cross strike which is just hitting way too much damage it's not even fair then he gets oil strike and then he can hit after that with a flame strike boom tons of damage can reduce and uh, increase the overdrive really well he can exploit yeah elemental weaknesses as he goes on he can hit all the enemies with powerful attacks he has all amazing single target debuffs he has probably my favorite ultimate move in the game like glenn is just stacked he's amazing i know not everyone would put him this high but i'm putting him this high I think he's one of the easily one of the best characters in the game. Just amazing all around. And if you give him HP drain, he's unkillable. Like I soloed parts of the main boss with just Glenn and HP drain. Like he can do that much damage at a time. It's absurd. All right, next is Kylian. Hopefully you listen to me about the spoiler warning, but Kylian is a temporary character. And for that, he's just like if you compare him, even if you compared him endgame, like if you gave him some extra abilities, like he's he's D tier. He's just like think like Raphael plus Glenn, but not that good. Like I think that's really what Kylian, even when you have him, is really not even that amazing. His wide swing is pretty nice. His uh his multi-target debuff is pretty good, but really, Kylian, he starts better than some of the characters, but he falls off real quick and becomes pretty bad even when you have him. And then once you lose him, of course, he's just not good anymore. So, yeah. All right, next we're going Len. Yet again, we're going back up in the S-plus tier. Len is absolutely absurd. You, you give her third eye... You give her that one thing, I can't remember, it's the thing that takes you down to zero TP but buffs your next three attacks for 80% damage. You can hit thousands of, you can hit more damage than a Sky Armor easy, like really easily. And then consider that you can hit all the elemental weaknesses and you can hit multiple targets for elemental weaknesses and you can cleanse all debuffs from enemies and you've just got an absolutely broken character. The only reason she's not above Glenn is she does take a bit more setup and her health is pretty low. Her survivability is pretty awful compared to most of the characters in the game. But nobody even comes close to how much damage Len does. Like hidden elemental weaknesses, the third eye, some debuffs, some buffs on Len, and you've just broken the game. Oh yeah, my favorite thing to do specifically, I would third eye, then I would use dry uh, with either Victor or Eagle and get everyone dried and then water jump and it would just own everything like it's hilarious how powerful len can be all right next is going to be rob i like rob more than a lot of people i'm actually going to put him in the b tier i know it's probably controversial a lot of people say he's the worst in the game but rob carries during some of those earlier game boss fights and really he just has so many debuffs in his arsenal and how this game works, debuffs work on anything. So I feel like more than even a lot of other characters, Rob constantly has something to do. You can shoot, poison them, then toxify them, then sleep them, then paralyze them. Like you can do so much with Rob. Pandemic, an awesome ability. Really, like I feel like Rob always has something to do. Give him like the cleric job and then he just becomes an amazing support character. I know he's not perfect. 
He's not as good as a lot of the other characters, but he can really chip down some of those boss healths. And the biggest problem is once you've debuffed them once, how it works is to get rid of their resistance, you have to do it once, and then twice, and then three times. So if there's ever a long battle, Rob's not going to be that great. And he's not nearly as good for enemy fights as he is for normal fights. And his most valuable thing, which is Paralyze, Victor can do as well. And Victor's an amazing character. So I, I don't think Rob is as bad as people say. And I certainly do not think he's the worst character in the game. I think he has a lot of pros. But yeah, he's amazing in boss fights. He... Oh, a lot of times has something to do, but he's also not good for huge groups and not good for super long boss fights. So he's, yeah, pretty, pretty dang solid, especially if you give him like a cleric job, but he could be better. All right, Sienna is going up into the S tier. The thing about Sienna, early game, it's all about making enemies bleed out. It's all about hitting pedal storms and all that jazz then later in the game you want to be hitting the thing like doing extra damage when they're paralyzed that dart ability that gives people ran like the whole enemy team random status effects i love that ability the agility buffs and critical buffs by the end of the game make sienna become absolutely absurd like give her some good crystals give her all the innate agility crit buffs crit damage buffs all that stuff up and then use her one ability that hits like six times depending on your agility. I think Dragon Fang is what it's called. You can hit for insane damage. It like some probably the best single target damage in the game. The only reason I don't put her in S plus is she's a bit more unreliable because even if you have amazing agility, sometimes you'll only hit like twice. Like I buffed my agility all the way, did all that, and you know sometimes you're just unlucky, and then you only hit for like 400 damage. And that's not the best. But yeah, she can steal. She has great agility buffs. She has great debuffs. Bleed is always useful. And you know what? You can't go wrong with putting Sienna in your team. All right, next is going to be Victor. I'm going to put him the S tier right above Sienna. He's the ultimate buffer, the ultimate support character. HP and TP regen in this game are amazing. HP regen can pretty much nullify actually needing to heal normally for the most part. And... He, the heroic him an amazing buff he can make the whole enemy team dry which is way too good with water jump he can he can do so many things like and he can lower resistances with his songs like he can do everything he always has some amazing buff or debuff he can put on the party now once you've got those buffs and debuffs set he's pretty bad like he has no offensive capability and, I mean, as much as we love the buffs and the debuffs, I can't really put someone in S+, plus when, like, Len is the best damage dealer in the game, and Glenn is an unstoppable HP drain killing everything. Like, I mean, Victor's close. I think he's amazing, but since a lot of other people do have buffs and debuffs and quite, don't really quite match up to these two, I think a high S is where Victor belongs. All right, next we're going to go with Bethraz. And Bethraz is going to go in the A tier. I don't think he's as good as Len. The thing is, it's for him to be good. It's like Berserker and you want to get Berserker and Hell or Heaven on. But it's just, it, I feel like it requires more setup than Len for less payoff. Whereas Len, because his, his abilities are all light or dark focused, which actually hinders him a lot because you can't, dry or oil or wet or like any of that stuff that's the thing about len and there's no white and dark resistance down things that victor has so when he's focusing on light and dark i mean yes with his summoned attacks he can heal and heal tp and all that stuff but but thraz just doesn't deal as much damage as len and i know some people like him more but I just can't say he's better because really light and dark damage is at an inherent disadvantage in this game. And Hell or Heaven requires you to pretty much let yourself die. I mean, yeah, you can pre-vive with, or whatever it's called. I don't rejuvenate. I don't remember what it's called in this game. But you can do that with Amalia, but that's just another turn. And less turns better. I just think Len is more 
consistent. And Len has that one ability that it hits whatever they're weakest against, which saves a lot of skill slots. So in the end, Bethraz is good, but I would always go with Len above Bethraz. And I felt a lot of times Bethraz just felt like a worse Len. And I can't say he's worse than the A tier, but I certainly can't say he's much higher. All right, next is going to be Amalia. He's going to be top of A tier. Usually I want to put like the main healers in like the S plus tier. That's just how I roll. But in this game, with Victor, how good HP regen is in this game and how fantastic HP drain is, usually you just want people who can deal the most damage and heal back all their health. And I feel like Amalia, she's a good character to have as a backup if you need it as a crutch and her dog can block some attacks here and there. But really, Amalia is just all about the healing. And in a game where, I mean, healing is great, and she's an amazing character to have when you randomly need her. She's a good, you, like, you always want her in your party, but she's always going to be in the back row. Like, you do not need her in the front unless you actually need her in the front. So she's a good character, but not, like, absolutely top tier because, you know, it's all about debuffing and buffing in this game. I feel like healing isn't really as big of a priority. So, yeah. All right. Tom K, Tom K, whatever we're calling him. I want to put him in the low B tier. And a lot of that just has to do with you have to can all the. Sorry about that. You have to can all the enemies. And I know that that sounds cringe, but canning some of the good abilities takes a while in the game. And he just starts awful. Like, he's an awful character to start out. And once you do can, he's just, he falls too much into the blue mage trope of just having so many random things that don't synergize that well. Because I, I could tell you what the point of all these other characters are. Like, Rob, inflicting status ailments. Bethraz, huge light and dark damage. Amalia, amazing healer. Sienna, speedy damage dealer. Victor, buffer. Len, amazing offensive mage. Glenn, just an all-around amazing attacker. Whereas Tom K, he's a good tank. He can survive forever, and that is amazing. But why survive forever if you can't really do anything that amazing? Yes, he has a good HP TP buff. He has a good defensive buff, but nothing that Victor can't handle. Nothing that any other character... I mean, I still think he's a B-tier character, mostly in part due to how amazing a, a tank he is, how much health and defense... And because he has all his stat buffs available from the get-go, so you can just make him a really good, like, high stat character. That's what I did originally because I hadn't canned anything. So, yeah, you can just make him, give him really high stats, but in the end, it's really not worth it. He's, I mean, he's good occasionally. I did use him from time to time. He was a good backup, like, in case I would usually put him behind a character like Amalia or Len or Rob who just doesn't have that much health and swap him in if need be but yeah all right eagle is gonna go in the c tier at first i thought he was fantastic but really he's just not that amazing the problem with this game is so many enemies use special moves and his whole idea is tanking physical damage but so many enemies are using multi-hit moves so many enemies are doing all this stuff and that's all he does he's just a tank like all of his moves are around getting enemies to hit him with specifically physical attacks and in a game where enemies have quite a few multi-target attacks he's just not amazing he's good but once you get Raphael, he's just i mean even glenn i feel like function better as a tank tom k like and his physical damage he has no moves that are focused on doing damage except for like his very last ability but unloads all his ammo which is annoying he's just not that good i mean he's i feel like he had a cool concept going here but he just really is not too good of a tank and you really don't need a dedicated tank that is only guarding physical attacks now on the other hand our next tank Raphael, is going to go a bit higher on this list. I'm actually going to put Raphael right in the middle of the A tier. And why is that? Because of how magic damage tanking does. Because 
you can get the multi-hit magical attacks to all hit Raphael, and Raphael is a beast in terms of HP. So you can just make no other party member ever get hit and just focus on healing Raphael. Now, a lot of times, if you're not being careful, Raphael can die. And again, it's all about the HP drain in this game. Like the tank, he's amazing tank, but you get him really late in the game and you don't really need him. However, he's a great tank, nullifies that magic damage really well. And honestly, he has some good offensive capabilities. I mean, his he has some decent multi-target uh, multi debuffs and a couple decent single-target attacks, which none of them do a ton of damage, which is another reason why he's only in the A tier, but so much more than anything Eagle can do. So that's good. And just having that party-wide debuff that Kylie and used to have earlier in the game, it's, it's nice. It's really nice. Then you don't have to spend the ultimate move gauge on Glenn, and you can use it to nullify damage with Raphael or Eagle or revive people with Amalia or get that party Y regen with Victor or, you know, make Sienna OP, like all these different things. Then you can save your ultimate meter for things other than debuffing. So, all right, Magnolia easy bottom of D tier, like even below Kylian. Magnolia is so much worse than Len because for her to do anything, it's all about being all about garbage, random RNG. And for her to get an actually good weapon, you need to be every unique monster, which means you have to do everything in the game before she gets good. And she needs to turn into fairy form to be good, but she can only do that once per battle. And even still in fairy form, she can't do as much damage as Len. She's a cool character, but she has nothing on Len. And Len actually has, gets to pick between like multi-target or single target, whereas Magnolia is always just doing, if you can get Magnolia to do above a thousand damage without getting lucky and getting a 10, I salute you. Like that's insane. But Magnolia is never going to be doing nearly as much as Len. Like Len, I was doing 8,000 damage on a regular basis. Magnolia barely could get above a thousand on most like it, she's just so much worse than Len and she has worse defensive stats she is the weakest character she makes you know what I I can't even say she's in the D tier I'm adding an F tier like she's that bad she's awful like I tried to like I tried to integrate her I think her best thing is her random buffing and that's depressing because that sucks all right, last on this list, another controversial pick for me. It's like another Rob all over again, but I'm actually going to put Micah in the C tier. And for me, she's all about damage dealing and buffing. Now, I think the biggest draw of Micah is she buffs like Victor can, but they count as two separate buffs, which is nice. It means you can like double buff. But the biggest problems with Micah is her survivability is crap. Like, worse than Lens. And she can't do as much damage. She requires three turns to be actually doing a ton of damage because of how the way her combos work. So her buffing is good, her damage is good, but she just can't match up to Victor or Len. And really, and her TP is trash because her abilities cost so much. And so she runs out really quick. I just don't think she's nearly as good as a lot of people say. And I just think Len is always better because if you just want physical damage, go with Glenn. Go with Sienna. If you want magical damage, go with Len. Maybe go with Bethraz. Like, you don't really... And Micah's just way too late game of character to be, like... And, yeah, her combos, I just don't find them too effective because it... Whereas Len or Sienna, like, you can buff them with other characters. Whereas Micah's damage, she has to keep taking turns. So it takes her three turns to get good. Whereas Len, you can get, I don't know, three different characters in a single round. Buff, Glenn, uh, buff Len, and then the next round she can get really hit for really powerful damage. So really, I just don't think that they're even comparable. I think Micah... A little overrated, 
I get it if you like her, but I just can't see her being a better attacker than Sienna or Len. So, all right. I hope you enjoyed this tier list. This is my opinion. Please share yours down below. I know it's going to be different. I know Rob will probably be lower. Micah will probably be higher. Tom K might be lower for some of you. It might be higher for some of you. I think a lot of people would switch like the top four. I feel like my A tier is pretty solid. Like I feel like that's probably pretty agreeable. I'm not really sure. I know Raphael is another one who's a bit more controversial. So let me know down below what you think. Thank you so much for watching this video. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out, RPG fans. Thanks to my good man, Kimo, for being a patron. If you want tons of exclusive RPG content, join now as a patron today.